Let's dig deep into the pages of history to know what really happened to Domitian. Domitian's Degraded Youth In 51 AD, Domitian was the youngest son of Vespasian, who later became the Roman Emperor, defeating Vitalius. Despite being widely regarded as intelligent, he did not participate in court schooling like his considerably elder brother Titus. Domitian was in Rome with his uncle Flavius Sabinus in December 69 CE, while Vespasian was engaged in battle in the eastern provinces to seize the crown away from Emperor Vitalius. He was able to flee with a companion over the Tiber to safety when Vitalius' army invaded Rome and set fire to the temple where he was sheltering. Domitian returned to Rome and became the envoy of the Flavian family. He was accompanied by the Flavian soldiers to take back control of Rome from Vitalius. Roman citizens welcomed him as the upcoming Caesar. The majority of administrative choices, nevertheless, were made by others. In October of 70 CE, Vespasian visited the city and was welcomed back as the new emperor. Later, despite receiving titles and honors, Domitian never aspired to any real authority and had inadequate training for an emperor from either his father or, later, his brother. Domitian's Lust for Power Domitian's elder brother, who succeeded Vespasian following his death, was the first emperor to succeed their natural father. Titus passed away in 81 CE when he and his brother were traveling outside of Rome. This marked Domitian's ascension to the throne. Later, there were accusations that Domitian was involved in poisoning his brother to death. Widespread rumors circulated in the empire that the new emperor had also previously attempted to dispose his brother and assume the throne for himself. Domitian left his brother on his deathbed dying and hastily traveled back to Rome and the Patreon camp to be crowned as the emperor. Domitian's Initial Achievements During the early years of his reign, Domitian demonstrated his ability as a leader and his concern for the welfare of his populace. Many parts of Rome had to be rebuilt after the Flavians took control, largely because of fire, deterioration, and the inaction of earlier emperors. Domitian rebuilt the burned-out remains of several public structures, including the Capitol, which had burned down in 80 CE. He also constructed a new temple dedicated to Jupiter the Guardian, a new stadium, and a performance hall for poets and musicians. Domus Augustana was constructed during his reign, where he hosted countless feasts and receptions. He built the Flavian Palace on Palatine Hill for himself, as he disliked liked the ancient imperial palace. He made an effort to improve public morals, despite his lack of moral principles, by banning male castration, criticizing senators who indulged in homosexual behavior, and censoring the Vestal Virgins for their transgressions and incest. Domitian was regarded by those around him as being kind, restrained, attentive to all his friends, and careful when administering justice. The Paranoid Domitian According to historians, Domitian was not always wicked. He became brutal due to his greed and fear of assassination. Later, as his reign progressed and the demands of leadership increased, paranoia overtook him. He increased the Jewish tax put in place by his father and confiscated the riches of the senators and affluent Romans to pay for his building projects and lavish lifestyle. He had no regard for anybody and was secretive as well as malicious. Even his wife was a target of his paranoia. He intended to execute her, as was customary during that period, after accusing her of adultery. The emperor took great satisfaction in being referred to as a master or god and considered himself as having total power. Did you know that September and October are named after him? He renamed two of the months, Germanicus, which is September, and Domitianus, which is October, as an honor for himself. He employed informers and other drastic methods as a result of his paranoia. He ordered the interrogators to cut hands and sometimes even the genitalia to torture the prisoners to learn more about potential conspiracies or rebels. In later years, Domitian was so suspicious that he ordered his guards to carry a highly polished moonstone to the gallery where he went for his daily walk to reflect everything in front of him. He killed the husband of Flavius Clemens, his niece, on the grounds of atheism because he cared about the fate of the Roman Jews. However, there were assassination plots conspired by many senators resulting in their deaths in September of 87 CE. Later that year, the governor of Upper Germany, Lucius Antonius Saturninus, was successful in ending the revolt. 
In addition to publicly ruling like a dictator, Domitian undermined the Senate's traditions. He insisted that priests perform rituals for his father's and brother's cults since he claimed to be a living deity. Domitian erected several sculptures and architectural elements decoded with chariots and triumphant symbols because he insisted on being called Dominus, which meant Lord and God. The Reason for Domitian's Downfall since the fall of the Roman Republic, the semi-monarchical form of administration created by Augustus, known as the Principate, had significantly reduced the power of the Roman Senate. The Participate preserved the official structure of the Roman Republic while permitting the presence of a de facto totalitarian rule. The Senate generally accepted the de facto monarchy of the Emperor in exchange for the Emperor upholding the democratic public face. This arrangement was handled differently by every Roman monarch. Domitian found it intolerable. He frequently appeared before the Senate as a victor and a conqueror to express his dislike for them. He had no qualms about displaying his contempt for aristocracy by stripping the Senate of any legislative authority to confine its role to administrative oversight. Instead, he relied on a select group of friends and equestrians to hold crucial positions of power. Domitian hosted a dinner party and invited prominent Romans. His visitors arrived to find their names carved on slabs like tombstones, the room completely dark, and their host preoccupied with death. This suggested that senators disapproved of Domitian. The Assassination Plot of Domitian Vespasian and Titus incorporated the Senate in their decision-making, and their methods contain aspects of the previous Roman Republic, which was Domitian's primary concern. Domitian sought to reign as an absolute monarch. He would never enjoy the favor of the senatorial elite, since he had been ignored by the new emperor. This just made him more despised, and over time, even his most devoted supporters started to conspire against him. One of the closest of the conspirators was Domitian's wife, who was also tight with his niece's former steward. Stephanus had cause for concern because he had been charged with embezzlement. Together with members of Domitian's staff, the two came up with their scheme. Stephanus placed a bandage around his arm and claimed to be injured. He donned a protective covering and pretended to have an arm injury for many days. A dagger was concealed by the bandage. On the morning of September 18th, Stephanus went to Domitian and presented a scroll with a list of potential conspirators. Domitian was stabbed in the leg by Stephanus after he became disoriented, even though it was probably not where he meant the first blow to land. Then, other conspirators rushed into the room and attacked Domitian, stabbing him to death. He put up a brave fight to save himself, but it was in vain. The Roman Senate was delighted to learn of his death. The senators crowded to accuse Domitian in the house with angry and insulting yells. By removing his sculptures and ceremonial arches, the city marked the former emperor's demise, and Marcus Cocceius Nerva was announced as the new emperor. The Roman Emperor Domitian was murdered on September 18, 96 AD, and his reign finally came to an end. This is what really happened to Domitian. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, check out our others on famous historical figures from all throughout time. Make sure to like and subscribe and turn on the bell icon so you never miss a video. I'll see you next time.